Dear brothers and sisters, greetings to you all on Pentecost, this birthday of the church. In a few weeks' time at Claremont Congregational Church, we would have celebrated our church's birthday. We are 180 years old as a constituted congregation, and we were supposed to have a birthday brunch. Of course, we can't do that now. But we bring you greetings and pray that this word that we share with you will bring you joy and peace. Our reading today comes from John chapter 19, reading from verse 19 to 23. John 19, reading from verse 19 to 23. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, to them receive the Holy Spirit if you forgive the sins of any they are forgiven them if you withhold forgiveness from any it is withheld let us pray Almighty God our Heavenly Father as we reflect now on this passage I pray that the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. If you read on in this Gospel passage in John 19, Jesus greets his disciples three times with these words, Peace be with you. There is nothing unusual about this greeting. It was customary. Today it still is in the Middle East. Shalom, says the Jew in Hebrew. When I visited the Western Wall in Jerusalem um, a few years ago, I even was greeted by a Hasidic Jew when I turned around from the wall where I'd placed my prayer. They usually don't interact with you, especially if you are a Gentile, although I had a yarmulke on with a messianic emblem. But shalom, he said to me. Only time I was greeted by someone from the Hasidic community. Salam, the same root word, says the Muslim or Christian in Arabic. But this peace is more than a greeting. It is a state, a spiritual state, a psychological state, an emotional state, a physical state. Yet Thomas and the disciples, when they heard this customary greeting, would not have reacted normally to it. It is not every day that someone who has died appears to you. Brothers and sisters, we are not talking about a ghost here. This was Jesus in the flesh. This passage proves to us that Jesus was resurrected in the body, in the flesh. See, here are my hands where the nails were, my side where I was stabbed by the sword. For the disciples, this greeting was significant because they would have surely remembered his words to them at an early occasion before he was crucified. And they not only remembered his words, they wrote them down. In John chapter 14, verse 26 to 27, we read, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you, all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. 
Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. There are a number of things we can learn from these two verses in John 14. Firstly, this peace involves the Holy Spirit. This was also the case in our Gospel passage in John 19. Jesus breathed on them the Holy Spirit. This verse fascinates me. It is so short, but worthy of much contemplation. Jesus breathed on them the Holy Spirit. If there is one thing that I yearn for in this ministry we all share in, it is this, that we have received through our faith in Jesus Christ the Spirit of God and that we continue to receive the Spirit daily. We will not know peace in our lives if we do not open our hearts to the Holy Spirit. The only peace that we will know is a worldly peace. And when we lose things in this world, as we are losing right now. If our peace is a worldly peace, we will lose that peace. I have worked in the poorest communities in our country, in community development work, with farm workers and other rural communities. I have worked in very poor communities in KwaZulu-Natal in the Etequini area, people who have very, very little working in community health service. Yet I have met so many people in that circumstance that seem to be at peace with the world. And I have worked with people who are comparatively speaking very, very wealthy yet they have very little peace in their lives. Our homes cannot give us the peace we need. The car we drive cannot give us the peace we need. Our makeup, our clothes, our hairdos cannot give us the peace we need. My garden cannot give me this peace as much as it gives me great joy and leads me to worship my Creator. Our jobs cannot give us this peace. Our family and friends cannot give us this peace. The alcohol I am allowed to buy tomorrow will not bring me this peace. The government cannot give me this peace. It cannot give me this peace. It really can't. It can only keep the peace but this peace Jesus speaks of, it cannot keep. Moving to the same faraway place, to some deserted place, cannot give us this peace. I cannot give you this peace. I can only share it with you. But this peace that I can share with you is given by God. Not as the world gives, says Jesus, do I give you. Yes, we have to survive in this world as we know. I don't have to remind you of that. We are feeling the sharp edge of it now. Particularly those of us who are the most vulnerable in our communities. We have to eat. We have to have a roof over our heads. We need water, safe water. We need clothes, an income. And yes, there is nothing wrong with some pleasures in life. 
the ones that are good for us. Even Jesus permitted those. He made wine at the wedding in Cana. He allowed Mary to anoint his feet with expensive oil. But our peace, our real peace comes from God. And when we allow this peace into our hearts, our hearts are not troubled and we are not afraid. Peace be with you. Amen. It's a peace that the world cannot give It's a 